Welcome back, Adam Bazalgette here in sunny Naples, Florida. Two-time PGA Teacher of the Year Award winner down here. Want to touch on a subject today, an important one, how to chip and pitch a golf ball. Stay tuned. So how to chip and pitch a golf ball. We're gonna look first at the definition. Are they the same? Are they different? Try to clear that up for you a little bit. At least I'll give you my version. And secondly, and most importantly, we're gonna look at two of the most common pitfalls I see when people try to hit chips and pitches and how to counteract that. One of them is kind of cool. You'll see something really instinctive and easy that could solve a problem you might have been having. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel. We'll get you more free content. Feel free to leave a comment there. And of course, my home website, scratchgolfacademy.com. We have full courses in every aspect of the game, including a full in-depth course on chipping. You can also do one-on-one -on -one internet golf lessons with me at the site there. So let's get started. So there's a little pitching wedge shot here by the edge of the green. Let's talk briefly about definitions. Now, what's the difference between a chip and a pitch? Now, let me just say, we're talking now about short pitches near the edge of the green, not long and intermediate pitches. Best definition I've heard, and you've doubtless heard the same one, is a pitch goes more in the air with less roll, and a chip just the opposite, less in the air with more roll. But I would say when you're near the green, more than anything, that's a function of club selection. So you could potentially have a long chipping stroke if you had an enormous green to roll over, or you could have a sand wedge and have a fairly small pitching stroke if you only needed to go five or six yards, but you had to stop the ball. So I would say this, they're both when you're near the green, very similar in this critical area from about there to there. Now certainly, if you get a little bit beyond that, you're gonna start cocking your wrist a little bit and you're gonna start pivoting a bit more. But I think you'd do better off to just think of what's a good stable stroke there at the bottom and not necessarily feel like you do something different from chipping to pitching. We've got more on that in other videos I've done. So I don't wanna camp out there. I wanna to go to these two pitfalls that are so common because I think these will really help you if you can solve these. Let's check out the first one. Okay, so first of the two pitfalls, this is a very, very common one, and that's kind of snatching the club to the inside, getting it behind you there in the beginning of the takeaway. See this all the time. First thing is it causes two real problems. Number one, the more you get the club to the inside, and you gotta remember now on a short shot, you don't have to, time to hike it up and change your swing plane. When you're stuck back here, you're gonna tend to hit the ground sooner than you would if you're on plane. The more from in here you swing, the earlier you'll hit the ground. Of course, that causes a problem, and the, and the solution so often is the mind stabs at the ball to try to get up there and not hit it fat, so we don't want that. And perhaps just as damaging, if you get the club behind you, you're either gonna hit the ball to the right, or again, you've gotta kinda of flinch with your hands and try to knock the ball online. Likely not as dramatically as I just demonstrated there, but they're very damaging effect. These very damaging effects come from getting the club to the inside. Here's the thing of it, it's not actually a natural movement. Now here's what I mean by that. Let me grab a couple of clubs. I've placed a towel on the target line here, and I'm telling, I've done this with a lot of people. If you were to stand here with a golf club and look at the target, so there is no ball in this equation, and just toss a club towards the target like that, you can do that at the house or in the yard, I'll bet you your club would go back in a direction that is matched to the target line. And you do it without thinking. So I'm telling you, toss a couple of clubs, start to get a feel for that. And to me, level two of that drill I've got a pitching wedge here. Go ahead and make a little chip shot looking at the target. Now the target could be the flag or just trying to land it over the towel. Now, there's a reasonable chance you're not gonna make solid contact with the ball. I may not right here. That's not really the point of it though. You'll start to feel, hey, where does the club wanna go that relates to my target and lock into that. Make sure though, if you do that, you do a pretty small backswing because with your eyes over there, you're not gonna be able to make much of a pivot. So keep the backswing small. Let's give it a go. That was actually a pretty good shot there. Probably better than I could do with my eyes on the golf ball. But anyway, that happened to be a good shot. So do that. Do some looking at the target on the small scale, then do some regular ones and start to notice if you're doing it a lot differently than, would, than you would if you were, say, tossing a club. So pitfall number two, 
I would describe that getting your body center too far behind the ball. You'll often see too much shoulder tilt this way when you do that. And remember, when you have a little shot like this, you don't have a lot of dynamic weight transfer and lag. You don't want that on a little shot like this. So your swing is gonna tend to bottom out more or less under your body center. So here's the key. You've gotta get that body center up here. If you don't, you're gonna bottom out too early. And what happens is you either get a miss hit or you have to sort of salvage the shot with a little recovery. And again, that's very, very hard to repeat. So the key is to know what the ball looks like to you when you're in the right relationship to it. So here's what I would recommend. Get a setup. I've got a ball in this hand. Get yourself to where you're sure you're in the right relationship and simply stick the club out in front of you. Now it's in a perpendicular relationship to where I'm hitting and just drop a golf ball from under that. You could see that that landed, oh, I'd say right around the front edge of the ball I intend to hit. So that would be a good spot. And once you've done it, you've just got to kind of look out, look down there and camp out and kind of figure out how everything looks to you. Get your geometry right in your mind's eye. Now, if you can get that swing plane right, and if you can get yourself in a good relationship to the ball, the geometry should match and you should be able to out bottom out in front of that golf ball that you're trying to hit. And here's the key, you should be able to do it absolutely effortlessly. So here's the test. I'm gonna set up opposite that ball, get my position, my swing plane feels good. And with absolutely no effort, I should time and time again be able to bottom out there. That's when you're gonna really have some confidence on these little shots. Now certainly, hey listen, if the ball's sitting up in some fluffy grass and you want a nice high shot, no question about it, you might want to lean back and add a little bit of loft. We're looking at generic shots though where the ball's down on fairway grass. So work on these two things. I'm confident they'll help you. I actually think this backswing plane thing would really be helpful to a lot of people in their full swing as well. Hope you're doing some good chipping and putting after, chipping and pitching after this. Well, hope you found that helpful, how to chip and pitch a golf ball. Again, my home website, scratchgolfacademy.com. I have courses in every aspect of the game, a nice full course on chipping, one-on-one -on -one internet lessons with me. If you like this video, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Would love to get you more of the free content coming. I appreciate your support. Thanks.